assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to discuss about our next drug the next group of the drug in in cardiovascular pharmacology that is angiotensin receptor blocker which are commonly known as arbs important class in renin angiotensin system angiotensin receptor blocker other group of the drugs or the drugs that blocks or antagonize the angiotensin receptor we are having angiotensin 1 angiotensin 2 receptors particularly they act upon angiotensin 1 receptors so 81 are abbreviated as angiotensin 1 receptors the drug class include the suffix they are taken up as sartan so low sartan wall sartan candy sartan etc are the drug classes which are included in the angiotensin receptor blockers the mechanism of action which is the important part in my every video so I try to make it easier for you people to understand it. Mechanism of action of ARBs are considered as follows. Let me draw the rep graphical representation over here. The angiotensin 1 receptor, as discussed earlier, are found on kidneys and as well as blood vessels. So, angiotensin 1 receptors are responsible for binding of angiotensin 2 which is formed previously in, in our lecture uh, ACE inhibitors. So let me recall over here uh, like we are having ACE inhibitors we have understand we have learned that angiotensinogen secreted by the liver is then converted into angiotensin 1 which is then converted into angiotensin 2. So this angiotensin 2 is responsible for binding to the blood vessels as well as to the kidney so angiotensinogen is converted by the renin and ACE act upon angiotensin 1 and convert into angiotensin 2 so these three pathways are taken up by normally if angiotensin 1 is not blocked so when ARBs are given or the angiotensin receptor blockers are given or administered they blocks or antagonize the 81 receptor at the blood vessel as well as the kidneys <coughs> as the blood vessel as well as the kidneys so there will be no conversion there will be no binding of the angiotensin 2 to the blood vessel and to the kidneys so there will be no vasoconstriction there will be no aldosterone secretion it takes place i hope this makes sense So, 81 receptors are the main target for angiotensin receptor blockers. Okay, so when angiotensin receptor blockers are given, they block 81 receptor. Therefore, no binding of the angiotensin 2, which is a potent vasoconstrictor, takes place with the receptors are commonly known as angiotensin receptors. Okay, so angiotensin receptors, the angiotensin receptor blockers works on two bases. The first one is the blood vessels. The blood vessels have 81 receptors. The angiotensin receptor blockers blocks 81 receptors at blood vessels so they cause vasodilation because angiotensin 2 is potent vasoconstrictor, vasoconstrictor if there is no binding of the angiotensin 2 takes place so it causes vasodilation so i hope this makes sense and it will be easy for you people to understand it okay the second pathway which is important to consider over here is the kidney in kidneys 81 receptors is present so ARBs angiotensin receptor blockers also block this 81 receptor on kidneys or at kidney site so this blockade of angiotensin receptor at kidney site causes prevention of aldosterone secretion so aldosterone secretion is responsible for water and sodium retention I hope this makes sense and it is easy to understand the mechanism. So the net result of ARBs angiotensin receptor blockers are it causes vasodilation, it causes natriuresis, it causes water loss or diuresis. Vasodilation because of blood vessel, because of blood vessels 81 block blockade or at 81 blocks and it causes vasodilation because angiotensin 2 will not convert will not be bind to the receptor site 
natural is because of no aldosterone secretion takes place so there is a sodium retention or commonly known as or easily if you can understand that is a renal loss of the sodium diuresis because of the renal loss of the water i hope this makes sense and easy to understand now okay this is important point to consider in and might be asked in the why what the difference between ARBs and ACE inhibitors as we have already discussed earlier in our in my previous video that ACE inhibitors also have effect on the calicrine kinin system which prevents the bradykinin metabolism so when ARBs are given they have no effect on the bradykinin as it has no action thus compared to ACE inhibitors the ARBs do not produce much vasodilation because they the bloody because they have no interaction with the bradykinin metabolism but they are safer from or the choice of the drug for the patients who cannot tolerate or who are having problem with the dry cough who are receiving ACE inhibitors So dry cough was because associated with the because of the uh, high level of the bradykinetic properties or the pharmacokinetic properties are all ARBs have 12 to 24 hours half life so can be administered once daily. So once daily dosing can enhance or improve the patient adherence or patient compliance. Indications associated with ARBs are hypertension, congestive heart failure. These are the most important indications and alternative to ACE inhibitors who cannot tolerate because of the patients who do not tolerate dry cough. Side effects include obviously the first one is the hypertension. Then we are having dizziness hyperkalemia thank you for watching it Allah Hafiz